Hello and welcome. So here we are again for Vital Signs and Voices into New World. And I'm very happy to have a very good friend with me today. And Richard said, it seems like we know each other forever. And it's really like that. Elizabeth Terry from Jamaica. Dear Liz is here with me today. Welcome Liz for sharing some of your beautiful signs and voices into the new world oh, with us thank today. you thank you patrick for having me it's a joy and a pleasure to be here sharing with you and you know your audience today so great yes looking forward thank you so much so liz has done quite a lot of things in her life using her gifts using a lot of skills and her training way beyond nlp that is part of her gig into leadership and so many beautiful things that have been a light for Jamaica and the world, if I may say so. But today, I want to talk with you about something very special and inviting our audience to see how we can really evolve, how we can really transform ourselves when we are on a journey that has the faith in us that this is the way we go. And I'm talking about the app that you mm -hmm. have created, Liz, yes. and that is actually going live. So Liz has been working a lot with adults all her life. And 10 years ago, she got inspired to take care of the youth. Mm -hmm. And can you share with us what, what came into your life that this mm -hmm. app was born? Let me call it that way. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Patrick. Um, you know, I worked for our national training agency uh, for 17 years. And so my background is also in project management. Um, I think you actually did some of that yourself, right? Yes. Uh, so this is what I was doing and uh, using technology and, and so forth in the design and development of programs for mainly at-risk youth. And one of the things that I noticed was, apart from issues around literacy and numeracy, the whole sphere of personal development and really having young people feel good about themselves, um, having you know strong self-esteem and confidence, that this was really lacking. And it was difficult to engage them, especially around chalk and talk. You know, they were really bored with that kind of um, methodology. Mm -hmm. And so with my experience in technology and um, project management and personal development, I decided, you know, like coaching and training, how do I pull that all together so that I can help reach the hearts and minds of these young people? And so that's really where the idea was birthed. And it didn't start out as an app. I mean, it started out, I, I became a passion test facilitator. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody said, what the heck is that? You know. And so that's um, Chris and Janet Atwood uh, with the passion test and learning how to sort of tap into your, in, you know, your inner um, wisdom and, and the things that really delight you. And I thought to myself, how do I get this across to young people? And so that's where it sort of started. And it just grew and morphed. And over the years, and they say nothing before it's time. And I wanted to have this out, you know, with young people years ago. But it just wasn't the right time. And it needed that gestation, and that, that um, morphing within me to give birth to what is now called Uno. So for those of you who don't know, Uno is um, Jamaican patwa for um, you, plural. And it actually comes from an African um, Igbo word. And, and so I decided that's nice and catchy. And it, because it means you, plural, it means I, I want to be, you know, this app to, to touch the lives of all our uno as we say, <laughs> right um and so that is is really the, the the nutshell of of how this this came about and so it's been it's been a journey i've been on very specifically with the app from about um nine, 2020 and i 
got catapulted into an entrepreneurship competition and you know won for Jamaica and won for the Caribbean and and so it just sort of it, it, it just sort of developed its own momentum that's all I can say until eventually I'm like okay I, I, I need to do something with this <laughs> so <laughs> we developed um, a prototype uh-huh. and that was in 2021 I managed to get some funding from a local NGO the CB Facey Foundation and the Joan Duncan um, JMMB Foundation and they contributed and I was able to do a prototype and we tested it out um, with some students and got feedback and our um, planning institute of Jamaica through their community renewal program they bought into the idea and they signed an MOU with me and it was just like, okay, we're going to go, we're going to do this thing. And so last year I put out a couple of proposals and I was able to get three funders on board. And that was um, through the European Union, through an NGO here called Rise Life Management Services. Right. And they got a grant. They're an NGO. They deal a lot with at-risk youth. And part of that grant that they got is to help me to develop this app. So that's one. And the second was the um, Planning Institute that I mentioned. They yes. decided to also come on board and support me and the team. And then the third is through the Development Bank of Jamaica and their Ignite program. So those three combined actually went together to produce what we're now going to beta test starting next week with a small school in um, Hannah Town, which is one of our more disadvantaged communities. Exactly, it is very, yes. Yeah, so they're excited. And um, I was telling you just before, yes. you know, we, we started this that I also very wonderfully was able to manifest the um, the assistance and support of an internet uh, an internet service provider flow yes. here and so flow have come on board they provided us with um, 40 phones, phones smartphones yeah. for the students that are going to be doing it and you know a data plan so it, it's really 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 exciting how it has all come together. I mean, if you ask me how did it happen, I would be hard pressed to lay out linear steps. That's yes. the truth. Yes, and I, I really feel it's such an amazing sign how you allowed yourself to go with your heart and bringing mm -hmm. all the things together that you have. And I feel this is really one of the significant things of our time today. And it's about mm -hmm. 10 years ago that you started. So it's really at the beginning of what we call the empty time in the Mayan mm -hmm. age, 2012. It yes. started till, till 2032, this empty time for us to come into ourselves, to mm -hmm. read the signs. And, and from what I, I really gather as well with you, you stayed with it. You know, yes. in Jamaica, we really have that saying. I always hear my uncle saying, nothing happened before time. Yes. <laughs> this is true. And it this is true, but it doesn't mean that you need to let it go. That grit, that fate, that I think that also making space for things for the unexpected. Of course, in, in, in project management, and as, you, as, as we both were mm -hmm. in that field, you're trying to plan everything. <laughs> yes. I brought in project management a part, of course, I had to teach all the uh, PMI and the prints and all of that. Yes. But what I brought in was appreciative inquiry. And for me, uh -huh. appreciative inquiry also gives that space for the magic. Mm -hmm. What is your dream and how can you dream it into being? And yes. in that, again, leaving that space for the unexpected. And this is how I'm feeling about that. There was something that burst in your heart for the youth. And what a better word than Uno. I mean, I remember that in school, you know, Uno. Yaman, yeah, we're together, you know, we're not separated. We are one, Uno. 
and mm -hmm. I feel language, as you know, I love language. Mm -hmm. Language is such an important part of this. And I'm really feeling that maybe not only in Jamaica, but the, the meaning, the vibration of that app or game will catch on because it's the new energy of a new world. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I, I mean, what you're saying here really resonates with me. Um, and, and you're quite right. I mean, there, there isn't any sort of prescription, you know, as I said before, it, it, it's not, it was not a linear process. And people have looked at me and said, boy, Liz, you're really persistent, you know. And I said, but I just felt it wasn't me. It, it was something that just kept on tugging at me. It was like a message that <laughs> said, you have to do this. And I just felt I couldn't let it go. It wouldn't let me go. <laughs> I mean, I wake up at night and I'm thinking about this thing. And people say, you, you, you're crazy. Um, why are you going to do that? And, and it, it's not just, yes, I mean, it, it needs to make sense business-wise, but that's not the reason that I've done it. I've done it because I just feel in my heart that it was something that I needed to do. And it was a message that needed to be heard and that there was this audience that needed to hear it. Yes. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so it's it's really been, it's been just a, an organic, unbelievable journey to to where it is now, and I don't even know how it happened. Honestly, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I I feel it's so beautiful, and I I recently got really pushed into declaring myself, if you wish, as an educator of the heart. Hmm. And, oh, and lovely. And, and, and it is what you're saying, you know, we need to trust our heart. It doesn't mean we don't use the mind, no. Of course. But if the heart is that light and that bridge and that force that takes us, mm -hmm. the mind will always play what it needs to do. It becomes a beautiful instrument. Yes. And I feel this is such a beautiful example that you have lived now in UNO. And we really need to, we need to start believing in ourselves. This is a new world. Yes. We're still in the making. I, I believe in the Mayan calendar and it's still another nine years to go. And I believe in the Kali time by 25, the dark ages are kind of finishing. I believe in all the cosmic stuff and all of that, because even the Bible, if we interpret yes. it freely, it says the same thing. Sure. So I truly believe that it's a time for us to come into the heart and trust that heart, that faith in our heart mm. to create what we need to create. I'm the, I'm the language guy, you know, so yeah. I, I created also a new term. I don't know if it's so new, but I call the people like yourself the new earth leading lights. Mm. And so I feel you are such a beautiful representation of that. And of course, the light comes from the heart. So the new earth, and we talk also about our new relationship with earth, is also mm -hmm. calling us into that. The heart is a connecting point. The new yes. relationship with earth, the new the relationship with each other, in your case with the youth, but mm -hmm. also in general with each other, the cosmos. Yep. And so isn't it just beautiful that we can actually do these things. And as you said, yeah. while it cannot be, it, it's not really a business, but it's still viable. Yes. Do, do you understand? We don't need to come from the profit perspective. Mm -hmm. And still, it doesn't mean we need to do things for free. No. I mean, one does have to live in the 3D environment. We still do have to go to the supermarket and pay bills. Yes. And, and so there's a practicality also there. But I, I wanted to just say something because I think it's important that um, this experience for me, I believe has been as transformative personally 
as I hope and expect that the UNO app will be for the persons who use it. Um, because I, I mean, I spent years doing project management and, you know, even NLP is, is sort of very left brain, um, level five values um, sort of thing. And so I, I tend to be very hyper rational and, you know, hyper achiever and, you know, all of those wonderful things that um, so align with project management. And what this experience has taught me is to open my heart. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so this is, is really, um, as I said, has been as transformative um, for those that I believe will take the course as it has been for me. And I think that's, that's the way of the world. Because what we do um, becomes our our light, yes. if we choose to to allow it, it actually it becomes our own transformation when we answer the call. Yeah. And I just I just felt I needed to say that. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's so, so in the resonance of my heart. It's like your words that there's, how should I say that? They, that ringing true in my heart. I think that's mm -hmm. the best way I can say it. And it's yeah. so beautiful to have that connection. Yes, it is the heart. I start writing books. I'm in the process of pros, uh, publishing. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, so I'm in the same phase and, and, and some, a lot of it is actually about the heart and very mm -hmm. much about your experience. Mm -hmm. And somehow I feel you went beyond the experience. You immersed into your heart. Yes, and it actually has made a difference to the coaching and training that I am doing. And so I got um, switched on early, well, late last year to um, another methodology called positive intelligence. Nice. And I'm in the process of completing my certification in that. And, and it's really about, yes, it's about emotional intelligence. Uh -huh. And it's about being able to shift from saboteur to sage in your thinking. But it's not just that. I mean, I've, I've kind of seen it as a process for engaging with your higher self and more fully appreciating your multidimensionality and the fact that you have this, this power available to you. But if you're stuck with your saboteur thinking, then you're going to get more of that. And, and so it, it, it's really um, changed the trajectory of my, my business. And you mentioned in your, your introduction about, you know, leadership training. And this is where I want to bring leaders into the picture because our leaders need to be thinking differently. They need to be thinking with their heart. And I know that sounds like a bit of a paradox, but this is the truth. Yes. And since, since COVID, what I have seen and observed is that COVID was a, a great shakeup for yes. the world. And it sort of reset the dial for those that wanted and were open to resetting. But, you know, maybe it's part of human nature. We tend to come back to what is most familiar. So as the world has opened up and sort of embraced a new normal, we want to fit this world into the model that we had before. And that doesn't work. And we're finding, I mean, now in business, that not only were people leaving businesses because they were realizing, oh my God, I hate this job. I don't want to be here working 24 seven for these guys and doing this work. I mean, I want to go and do my own thing. And so people left, but those that have come back, their expectations are different. They want different things now from their work. They want more meaning. They want more purpose. They want more connection. And so one of the things that is really important to me is to 
bring this tool, this thinking, this methodology to leaders for them to understand, first of all, themselves. Yes. Because a lot of they're just going through the motions, you know, and of busyness. And so they have to kind of step, be willing to step back a little bit and to re-examine their thoughts and, and how they're using their energies. And then how do you now use that knowledge, that, that self-awareness to engage more fully with your staff and to stop the judgment and, you know, all of these limiting ways of thinking that put people in boxes uh-huh. and tear their, their self-worth down? How do we build people up? Uh-huh. Because that is what is going to improve performance. Exactly. And business is about performance, right? We want people to, to perform, but people don't perform unless they're engaged. Exactly. And so that's, you know, a kind of, I yeah. would say, uh, a renewed message that I bring to my, to my training. How beautiful. And, my and I just love how much we are aligned and in resonance very mm-hmm. naturally and we don't speak every day it's no. not like you know we know what we are doing but it's that multi-dimensionality that you mentioned and also for for leaders just to step back out of the busyness when you live in business yeah. you are numb you don't know what you're doing you're, you're operating on automatic you are functioning and fight so, flight freeze exactly and this is a primitive mind of the homo sapiens that's right and as we're stepping in that homo luminous and changing actually the operating system mind and that brings us now to your left brain background mm-hmm. and i want to say it's not going into the right brain no it is going into the whole brain yes but Quite the so. whole brain without separation without judgment can only be accessed through the heart mm-hmm. so it is interesting how my methodologies are more downloaded than studied at the moment doesn't mean i don't study because an academic is always an of academic course. as you know <laughs> <laughs> but it is like when that operating system heart is activated the brain the mind becomes whole there's no separation And the other thing that, of course, happens, we're shifting from survival, fight, flight, freeze, fawn. Mm -hmm. We're stepping into love. Yeah. That's it. And I feel for leaders, and that's why I call people now leading lights. Mm -hmm. People need to be a light. They need to be a light in the world. That light needs to lead us into a whole new earth, into a whole new frequency. Yes. You can't ignore that time has changed. As you said, we don't live in 2020 again. No. Nope. And the most rapid change that we maybe ever experience is these 20 years, 2012 to 32. So yeah. where are we with that? Are we staying in the old fight, flight, fear form? Or are mm-hmm. we stepping into the heart and into the wholeness and multidimensionality? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just love that flow between us. And I hope our yeah. audience can appreciate <laughs> that too. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's, it's uh, as you said, it's so um, natural um, when you connect. You know, I, I wanted to mention something about the app because yeah. we, you, you talked about, well, maybe it was before we, we, we started yeah. playing, um, Gaia and this whole, you know, climate change thing is very much a part of, our consciousness these days and and so one of the we have three modules in the app and the first one is called uno can win so it's like changing the mindset so that young people can begin to recognize that they are winners they're actually born winners and they just need to you know realize that and and learn how to connect the dots the second one is um, um going for gold so, yes, I do teach goal setting because I think it's an important part of learning the discipline. Yes. Um, and, and so not so much because I, I really intrinsically believe, yes, you have to dot all the I's and dot, you know, cross all the T's. But I think 
the discipline of it as is an important almost like um training wheels for young people mm -hmm. and starting with the vision of course because i think that's super important you know you have to have yes. that big dream yes. that's going to motivate you and really keep you going and keep, like me i mean you know <laughs> you have to have the dream <laughs> yes yeah and and then you know talking about values you know what what's important to you yeah. in life it can't just and how you express it in else. the world exactly so that's the second module and the third one is called one love one heart and that is connections it's connecting with other people you know how do you manage conflict um how do you relate to your community um how do you relate to the environment so here you know you want to i want to engender them this this love of the environment and giving back so in order to get their certificate at the end they have to work in a group and they have to do a give back community project nice. um so that they they experience how good it feels to give without expecting anything in return yeah. And so, yeah, it's it's a super exciting program. I, I just love these three parts. I I really feel it takes them somewhere else, and this is really important. The another thing that is important to me now that we really tap into these new states of being. We are no longer who we were, mm -hmm. and yes. we are shifting on all levels. And I feel these three parts are really enabling they're enablers they're catalysts for the youth yes yes, to see yes in different ways and when you talk about goals of course i don't use the word goals but i use yes. the word dream and mm -hmm. in the shamanic tradition here they used to talk about the laika which were the ones who dreamt the new world into being ah okay so that and you mentioned actually the goal and the dream interexchangeable and i i fully agree with you i dream my dreams into being the other thing that came to me i still have a t-shirt from jamaica mm -hmm. i don't mm -hmm. know exactly when it where it came from now i know who gifted it to me dear friend yes. and it said dare to dream jamaica do you remember ah. that? i'm not yes. giving it up <laughs> hold on to it they're probably completely out of print so <laughs> i would imagine it's it, it's it's stitched it's not a print it's actually stitched. Ah. and that for me is is really also that spirit and it's so important to plant these seeds in our new and young people yeah. dare to dream and stay with it the discipline yes. the grit of it yeah, discipline yeah. doesn't always have to be rigid, you know. Yeah. No, um, it can be just like you know. As I said training wheels. It's just something yeah. that you do in yeah. order to get to another stage of ease and flow. So exactly. if you if you do this, then you build your muscles. Exactly. So I use the concept of the um, the whole meds gym, like you're building mental muscles. Um, because I believe that that's a concept that they can grasp yes. um, that easily. And they recognize that, yeah, in order to train your mind, you got to, you know, actually do the work. Exactly. And you build neural, new neural connections when you respond to situations in a different way than when you, how you used to. And in order to help you, go and visit the whole Meds gym. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really, really love that. And it's that, you know, when it's in the heart, you can't give it up anyway. It's not about being attached. It's not about having desires. Yeah. If something is in the heart and it wants to be expressed, it comes anyway. So the discipline is not outside of us. Mm -hmm. I feel it's more like a force, a power inside the heart, a grit that takes us there anyway. Yeah. Yeah, and I think once once you you have that vision and you have that that sense of of you know purpose and meaning, that there is it's something that becomes activated within you. It's almost like an alchemy, you know, that that happens 
that gives you the energy, that brings you messages, that you just, it, it, I can't say it's effortless, no. but it, it is, yeah, I mean, you do have to, <laughs> I had some sleepless nights, you know, <laughs> but, but it, it, um, it, it, it's just something that isn't forced. Yes, I exactly. think that's that's the word. It, it's it's in a way a flow that does require effort. You have to stay yeah. with it. Yes, yeah. you do. And the other part, of course, that I find really, really important is these community projects. And and I I, I love how you how you take it outside of the virtual space of the app, if you wish, and mm -hmm. actually bring it into life. And. Yes, I feel for all of us to have a new relationship with each other, new relationship with Earth, new relationship with who we truly are, which brings us also back to the first yes. part of your app and the second. I feel that is just so, so beautiful. So thank you for sharing this with us oh, today. It's been such a pleasure. <laughs> I can't wait to hear and I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait to hear and read the comments that come from mm -hmm. that and how people perceive that and how people are bringing that into your, their life and get a sense of that uno. But I yes. have one last question. We, we didn't talk about this, but you told me before, there's some conference or something coming up in Jamaica next year. Leadership, what did you tell me? Oh, no, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't did know that there is something? a leadership there's conference. something coming, coming up next year or you have a new project or? Well, I, I have a leadership program okay. that I, maybe that's what I was talking about. Yes. Well, share a little bit with us so, before we go. Sure, ahead. sure. So I, I, I do um, a 12 week program, mm -hmm. which is based on the tenets and the principles of positive intelligence. Nice. So nice. the first six weeks is all about, you know, building that foundation. Right. And right. then that's done as a group. And then after that, I have individual coaching sessions with each of the participants so that we can dive into specific areas that they want to work on. Yes. Um, you know, maybe they want to do some kind of clearing, um, focus on a particular goal <laughs> or vision, you know, dream that they have, maybe work on a relationship issue that they're experiencing how to to relate uh, more effectively with their staff communicate better whatever it is so it's a 12-week program and as i said it combines an app as well as group coaching which i think is also important part of the learning because yes. people not only learn from me they learn from each other and it's that sharing that often you know sparks some kind of you know light bulb moment for people so there is that built into the first six weeks and then after it sort of drills down into a more individual type of um of program customized for the individual so how lovely yeah it's, a, it's an I exciting it is very exciting and i really love about you your eclectics because mm. I'm eclectic too, so yeah. we, we flow with that very nicely. And I feel it's so important, no matter what we do, there is a group dynamics, a group spark that is equally important yes. to the one-on-one. -on -one. There are yes. things that never come about if we don't work one-on-one, -on -one, and there's things that never come about if we don't have the spark of the group. And I love how you bring the so. app and, and everything in and I really feel this is very important. But I really feel there is something else coming up about leadership between you and I. And I don't know yet, but something... I am open. <laughs> <laughs> A spark was just yeah. ignited. And we're going to explore that further. But yep. there, is, there is something about this new earth leading lights in the world. And I feel... Our work is just flowing so beautifully together. There's a synergy that is just mm. magical. Yes. So for today, dear Liz, thank you so much for coming on this podcast today, for showing us how important these vital signs and voices are in the new earth, how important it is that we are in this together.
Uno. And we're doing... Uno. Uno. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Patrick. It's been just an absolute pleasure sharing with you today. Lovely. Thank you so much, Liz. Take good care. You too.